on YouTube and Instagram. <laughs> I thought, you know, um, I wanted to do something simple today, so why not complicate it and have two screens that I have to look at? But this way, I'm, I'm live on both. People are happy about that, and when I'm done, it automatically uploads both to Instagram and YouTube. So I've got two of me going right now. I can... <laughs> I've got YouTube is watching on my old cell phone, right? Because that's still capable of using my YouTube channel. And um, <clears throat> Instagram is watching on my new phone. So anyhow, um, I thought I would come on here and talk about what people like always ask me about. They always ask me about my skin. They always ask me about my clear skin, what I do, what my routine is. And while I have a post about it, um, I know that stuff gets buried. And especially for those watching on YouTube, it really gets buried, right? Because it's not really like a, there's a community post section on YouTube where you can see where I post things. But like people aren't going there to look at like my wall. They're looking for videos where I talk about it, right? Um, and on YouTube the, or on Instagram, the only way that I can upload a longer format video is if I go live. So um, anyhow, I'm just here to jabber about what I don't do to my skin. And because that is kind of my skincare is more about what I don't do to it than what I actually do to it, um, if that makes sense. So I'm a little red today because I was chasing cows out of a pasture. <laughs> well, I should say I was chasing somebody's cow out of my pasture away from my cows, and it was like 100 degrees out, and I just I have not been handling the heat well this year. I live in the high mountain desert of northeast Oregon, so it gets hot here, but it also gets like, it also gets kind of, cold in the wintertime, you know, like, oh, you know, negative 15, negative 20 Fahrenheit, no big deal, but in the summertime, it's, it's pretty hot, so, anyhow, the first thing you need to know about my skin is that I don't wear makeup, um, I don't use soap, I don't use cleansers, I don't use anything like that, um, and that, a lot of that started um, because I was a homeless kid, right? Like I was, like from the time I was 13 until I was about between the ages of 19 and 21, I was a dirty old street kid and you don't care about makeup or like you maybe got a shower like once a week, depending on where you were at. Right. Um, and so for me, um, I just let my skin be natural not because I was thinking about it, but that just happened. So I grew up not being allowed to wear makeup, and then I left home before I was the age of being allowed to. But also, my grandma always told me, like, the worst thing you can do for your skin is use soap on it, or cleansers, or the alcohol wipes. Um, and so I don't do any of that. Really, it's like, how dirty is your face at the end of the day? Unless you're, like, <laughs> out in the mud, right? Like, I'm chasing cows, and I'm still not going to use... I mean, the cows weren't touching my face, but even if I was like, you know, I don't know, out in the woods, like warm water does it. Because when you start using soap, um, when you start using soap on your skin, what's happening is that you are stripping off your healthy fats, right? Your body works really hard to put these healthy fats um, into your skin for hydration, but also to protect you from bacteria. So when you are prone to things like acne, what's happening is that you don't have like that sebum layer, which is like a fancy word for oil that comes out of your skin. Um, you have more of that in your scalp, but you also have it on your face. You don't have this layer um, of healthy healthy fat that is um, protecting your pores from the bacteria getting in, right? But then people are like, oh, if I don't wash my face every day with like cleansers and strip everything off, what happens is I end up with really oily skin. Well, you have oily skin because you have dry skin and you have dry skin because you keep stripping off the healthy fats from your face. And when you do that, your body panics. <laughs> your body's like, oh my God. And it makes even more oil. So you're like, it's greasy, it's greasy, it's really greasy. And no matter what you do, you know, um, and if my husband is watching me in the kitchen, I can hear myself and that shit always throws me off. <laughs> Uh, so anyhow, I just said that because I'm like, I think I hear an echo of myself somewhere. But anyhow, um, so one, I don't use soap, right? I do not use soap on my face. I don't wear makeup. I don't do any of that stuff, right? Um, the next thing I do is I don't put 
stuff on my face like every day so I like to use healthy animal fats. I use tallow on my face like a tallow infused cream and now tallow has taken off in popularity in like the past year it's like a whole thing people are like oh give me tallow and that's really fantastic. I've been making um especially the people that have been following me on Instagram know I've been making tallow based face creams for a decade now. They're so popular that when I list them they sell out. There's nothing in my shop to go look at. <laughs> it's all gone until I do another cream shop update which is um mid to late August of the recording of this live video but um people overdo it with the tallow as well like I'm watching people now put like full just straight up tallow on their face and I'm like it's not bad for you but a little goes a really long way now you are a red meat animal as weird as that sounds people don't like to listen to that but like you are an animal that has red meat and that means that when you take tallow which is um the red meat that is made, or t fat that's made from red meat animals, like a cow or a deer. Now, sheep isn't. That's lanolin. It's something completely different. But think um, most tallow that you're going to encounter comes from cows, right? But because you are a red meat animal, your body highly recognizes that fat and it soaks it in really fast. It's very, very similar to the fat that your skin is producing. So about once a week in the summertime after a shower, I'll put on a little bit of tallow cream before bed. I like to use it before bed because it gives your face time to soak it in. You don't realize how much you're touching your face and wiping your face and doing all that kind of stuff throughout the day. So you kind of wipe it off. Whereas if you put it on before night when you go to bed, uh, like just before you go to bed, you're just resting. I mean, you're laying on your pillow, but it, it's soaking in. I mean, that's same for if you're trying to heal dry hands, put it on like before you go to bed, not throughout the day when you're washing and touching things like that. Um, so to recap, I don't use soap on my face. Um, I just use warm water. I don't use any cleansers. I don't wear makeup. I use a tallow based cream maybe once a week now in the winter time because I use a wood stove. I might do it twice a week, right? Cause I want a little bit more hydration, but that's really about it. Like I don't overuse a lot of product on my face or anywhere on my skin. Um, but then there's like a lot of internal stuff. So you have to remember that your skin is the largest organ on your body. And the state of your skin is usually a pretty good reflection, not just of what you put on it, but what you put in your body, right? If you are having like crazy acne all the time, you know, you might have hormone imbalances. It might be because you're eating nothing but but processed foods, you might be eating tons of PUFA oil, which is polyunsaturated fatty acids. Think your canola oil, your safflower, your grape seed, your vegetable oil, all that shit is nasty and it, it like saturates you from the inside out. Um, one thing that's kind of a sidetrack about that, but it does have to do with skin is I'm a little red right now because like I said, I was chasing those cows in the heat, but I'm not sunburned. And as somebody who used to burn like, just with the dawn sun <laughs> like the sun would come up and bam burn <laughs> like it's just not in my genetics to tan i freckle i burn i freckle i go back to white that's just the what just what happens um but when i stopped eating um poof oils and now i never really cooked with them because i grew up cooking with like butter and tallow and olive oil and things like that but they're sneaky they're in all the foods that you're eating even if you don't think there's going to be sunflower oil in there or soy oil or canola oil or safflower all that shit is snuck into your food so when i actively worked to remove that from my diet which was a little bit of a challenge don't try to do it all at once because it can be overwhelming but when i actively when I actively removed those fats from my diet, and I started in the wintertime a couple years back, I was like, whoa, I'm not really sunburning anymore, right? Like I can obviously sunburn still, but like it doesn't happen within the first like 15 to 30 minutes, right? It takes time. And I'd usually have to be out at like three o'clock when the sun is like at its peak, right? Like, and I'm like, wow. And so that made a really big difference in your, in my skin health, because that means that your body is more capable of protecting itself. But when you eat these PUFA oils, they basically, they come out of your skin because a lot of chemicals and things come out of your skin. And then it's like you rubbed 
vegetable oil all over your body and you went out into the skin. Now, beyond burning, you know that's going to age you too, right? Because these oils are full of free radicals. They are things that are damaging our skin. Now, I also eat lots of healthy animal fats. Oh my God, people are so terrified of butter. They're so terrified of tallow, of eating like anything. It all needs to be low fat. Don't eat real fat. Oh, eat this Crisco that used to be, that was originally made to be a submarine lubrication that they couldn't sell and they turned it into as a healthy alternative to butter when they needed to sell it. But you can't eat animal fats because that's been demonized. But you need these healthy fats. Your skin needs these healthy animal fats within and without, right? Like you need to be eating them internally and you can put them on topically. But also I eat um, nose to tail. So I'm eating like a lot of um, a lot of like joints and bone broth and like I've forever been like the knuckle eater of like a chicken leg. <laughs> Like, I've been that since I was a kid. You know, I eat lots of gelatin, um, collagen-rich foods. Um, on that note, I'm making sure that I eat a lot of vitamin C-rich foods. And real vitamin C, not ascorbic acid. You want it, like, intact with its, like, little copper nucleus, right? Um, because your body uses vitamin C to produce collagen, and collagen is the stuff of youth. When you see somebody who looks really young and they're in their 20s and you're like, wow, their skin is amazing, or they're, like, 15 or whatever, you know, that's because their body is, like, at its peak of collagen production. The older you get, the less collagen you are producing. Now, you should be getting it from your diet as well, but your body also produces it. But you need, you need real intact vitamin C that still has a copper cell, so no ascorbic acid, none of that nasty shit. You need real vitamin C to be producing that. Now, um, I know that I'm getting older. <laughs> I turned 38 not that long ago, but I think I'm looking okay for how rough of a life I've had, if I'm being honest. Um, but so that's a big thing I do, but then also hydration. I did actually need a drink and that just like played perfectly. <laughs> um, but remember that hydration isn't just drinking water. In fact, if you drink nothing but water, you are actually dehydrating yourself. If you were like, what? this. This bitch is crazy. <laughs> but the truth is, most water these days, especially if you're getting it out of the tap or buying bottled water, it's not spring water, it's not wild water, right? So it has all of its minerals are gone and you need electrolytes. You need potassium, you need magnesium, you need sodium, you need a uh, vitamin C. You need these things to be able to retain that water, right? And so that is actually how you are hydrated. So when you drink nothing but water and you're not on top of your mineral level status, what actually happens is you become more and more mineral depleted and you become more and more dehydrated. And no matter how much water you drink, you're still tired and your skin starts looking kind of gray or sluggish or loose and you kind of just feel yuck because your skin really needs to remain hydrated, right? And really that just comes down to a cellular level. Every cell in your body runs off of all kinds of things. Like you need glucose, but you also need all of these electrolytes. And if you're not getting these electrolytes, you're not performing what's called ATP, which is where you basically like create like the energy that animates you as this weird electronic like hairless monkey. <laughs> Right? And that shows in your skin because it's not like your cells only exist within your body. It's not like your skin isn't somehow fully made up of cells, right? So when people ask me about my skincare, I'm like, well, I don't really do much. <laughs> but I also do all the things. So it's more about not thinking that the only way that you can take care of your skin is like, what's this chemical that I can buy? I need a new soap. I need a new this. I need a new that. Where it really comes down to like, what am I putting on my skin that's harming it? What if I didn't put things on my skin? Um, what if I was eating enough healthy animal fats? What if I am keeping on top of my mineral status? How are my hormones doing? Am I estrogen dominant? Probably, um, especially in a world that eats nothing but pufa oils because those are super estrogenic, especially soy. It's the worst, right? And so these are really things that we can look at. And if you don't believe me, here's a crazy thing to consider. I have two teenagers. My son is 19. Well, he'll be 20 in October, which is weird. He has his own house and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> his own apartment, I should say. Um, and then my daughter is 16. They don't really have acne. They don't really have acne. And then, you know, and we're told so often, oh, it's really common for like teenagers to get like horrible acne. Well, a little bit here and there because your hormones are changing. But I'll say like in the past, like 
15 years, like it, it's not normal for how bad of acne kids get. And it's not just about hormones. It's about all the nasty food that's, that we're being given. And that's not to shame a parent. It's like, you can think you're buying organic, but like, if you look at the label, like everything, there's a reason why, like people like, just for example, like if you live in the U.S. and you have like all these gut issues and hormone issues and weight gain, and no matter what you do, no matter what you eat, you're like really unwell. People move to various different countries in Europe <laughs> where a lot of the chemicals and things that are in our food in the U.S. are illegal. A lot of them are illegal in different countries and suddenly without changing their diet, like a lot of their health issues resolve. There are people who are like straight up like celiac or like severely like let's say lactose intolerant that can like not eat any of that stuff in the U.S. but they move to a different country and they can and that's just something to consider right when we look at like why are our teenagers getting such bad acne like why are we getting such bad acne it's like your body on the inside is trying to tell you by showing you something on the outside now when it comes to things like eczema and psoriasis that's your liver all day long that's your liver and your gut being really really unhappy um so somebody said uh thanks to you i got rid of my acne by taking burdock and using tallow yeah so that's like a one two front so the burdock was supporting her liver which she brings us right to what I was saying. Um, and so, but the liver doesn't just do things like uh, help get rid of like, you know, uh, the toxins that are building up and making eczema and psoriasis. Your liver is how, for the most part, you get rid of excess hormones. And if your liver is sluggish, your hormones build up. Now we need estrogen and we need progesterone and we need testosterone, but when estrogen gets really high, the liver is really sluggish, you can't get it out, you start getting things like acne start getting things like psoriasis you start getting just weird skin things going on you know and now if you get a lot of blackheads that's because you've washed all the oil off of your face repeatedly and then the bacteria can get in there and then you know all the pollutions and things can get on there and you don't have that like fine layer of, of healthy fats to protect your pores from taking that in um, so you know um, when people say what's good for dermatitis, well, usually finding the thing that um, um, that's causing the skin irritation. Now, of course, then you get suckered into doing things like using essential oils on your skin, which is crazy because essential oils slaughter all the good bacteria on your skin but not only that I, the book that i just published there are studies that show studies that are so real that the fda is studying that the well the companies are studying this to make a drug to stop like autoimmune diseases that like attack your skin like sometimes your skin can just like eat itself alive they're like oh well essential oils apply topically regardless of the type because of um a particular compound in them they have the capacity to re reduce T cells from responding. Now, for those of you who don't know that, a T cell is kind of like a part of your immune system that goes out and fixes things. It says, hey, we've got this contact dermatitis and we need to calm it down, right? We want to calm this down and we want to stop this irritation, right? But when you put something on there that's literally repressing your immune system's ability to respond, <laughs> it just gets worse. So removing essential oils from your home, from the products, and even if you're like, I don't use this essential oils yeah you do they're everywhere um in my new book and it's called um oh my god essentially deadly <laughs> the unspoken dangers of essential oils um i talk about how like they're they're in everything even if you're not buying essential oils they're in your skincare products they're in your soaps they're in your shampoos they're in your food they're in your medication they're in your herbal remedies that you're buying they are everywhere they use them in the industry i mean they make literally billions of gallons of these oils a year and they're not all being sold in little tiny bo bottles that you can buy they're being used by the industry as an ingredient uh, um, but yeah, it's it's easy and not easy, right? But if we are having skin issues, it's our body saying, hey, we're really unhappy with something. It's either our gut isn't happy, the food we're eating is making us unwell, the cleansers we're using, um, our environment as a whole that we're living in in our home. Something isn't happy. 
right something isn't happy and your body is trying to give you uh your body is trying to give you these signals so somebody said what do i look for when buying vitamin c they all seem to be ascorbic acid that's right you have to look for whole foods vitamin c um or you just have to start doing things like you know drinking orange juice or eating oranges or other uh, other high uh, usually if food is high in copper it'll have a fair amount of vitamin c in it um i really like camu camu supplements uh you can buy the berries themselves, but it's just easier to get it in a pill because they don't really taste all that great. They're very sour <laughs> because they have so much vitamin C in them. Um, rose hip tea is a really fantastic way to get vitamin C. She also has a fair amount of copper, which you need copper to perform that ATP I talked about. So the cool thing about real vitamin C is it has like, imagine that the cell is an egg and the white of the egg yolk right the white of the egg is your vitamin c and the yolk of that egg is copper they work synergistically together but what happens when you take synthetic vitamin c is that your body is desperate to process and use that vitamin c that ascorbic acid so it starts robbing you of your copper stores to produce it and then suddenly you're low copper and you've got really low energy and you have brain fog and your hair is going gray really fast if you suddenly start getting gray hair and you're not like much older right if, you, if it happens sudden and fast um, and you're under the age of 50 in all honesty you should probably look at your copper levels um, so somebody said to save your organic orange peels and grind them up to put in capsules you could do that camu camu is like I like well even rose hips have higher levels of vitamin C than um, oranges do oranges are fantastic um, but you want to make sure they're good and ripe and it's like a wintertime food here Right, and in, in the well, it's a wintertime food everywhere. Like, you know, but unless you you happen to live somewhere like in the Mediterranean, and you're like, oh, it's December, my oranges are ripe. <laughs> now there's some, you know, obviously California and Florida and stuff like that. But I'm just gonna be honest. I haven't had a good orange in years. I'm like, oh, that one kind of tasted like an orange. Good job, orange, <laughs> right? Like, even if they're tree ripe, it just, I don't know. The climate's changing here, and the soil isn't great. So, uh, okay, so. Yeah, that's what I do for my skin. <laughs> and I thought, well, maybe I should make a... Um so somebody said, I would agree with this because I started taking supplements with copper and new sudden gray hairs I had turned black. Yeah, copper is, like, if you start looking at the copper deficiency world where people talk about that, like, sudden graying hair is, like... And I check that stuff all the time because stress can deplete copper. Oh, by the way, how many here jumped on the zinc um, bandwagon? Like when 2020 started, everyone's like, take zinc, you need zinc, you need zinc. Now you do need zinc, but did you know that zinc depletes copper? Like a motherfucker. Like if you have been taking a zinc supplement for more than a month, your copper levels are pro probably pretty low. Um, so, yeah. Um, but anyhow, that's what I do for my skin. Now, I feel like I'm missing something. There was something else I was going to say, and I'm like, something I don't do. Something I do, let's see, I... I don't use soap on my skin, I don't wear makeup, I don't clog my pores, I don't use cleansers, I'm making sure that I'm hydrated, um, you know, oh, I get morning sun, I should have talked about that a little bit more, I don't think that's what I was going to say, <laughs> but I'll roll with it. Um, you want to get sun on your skin. We've been made to be terrified of the sun, been told that we should be slathering ourselves in sunblock sunblock that may or may not be the cause of skin cancer <laughs> these days and we're like oh my god the skin the sun the sun ages you the sun ages you well actually the sun helps you perform said atp and it helps you um, turn cholesterol into vitamin d and it helps lower your cortisol levels and like humans have been like living in the sun for like thousands of years without sunblock um now i'm not saying that you should go get sunburned all the time but like morning sun when you first wake up usually within the first couple hours of sunrise is really really beneficial um for your mental health for your physical health for your skin health um and then it actually prepares you if you are in early morning sun and then you're out of the sun and then you're back in the sun and the more in the afternoon it actually helps prepare your body for being in the sun like it literally sends signals all throughout your body to be like the sun is up but when you like 
stay in your cave of an apartment or a house or whatever and you don't go out into the sun until like two o'clock in the afternoon and you've done nothing but look at blue light on your phone you're like oh i burn so bad the sun is bad <laughs> but really really no and it's crazy how how hard and fast the sun became demonized um around 1985 1990 when um a certain big company came out with like uh, chemical based sunblock versus just like zinc oxide, right? Like, um, you know, and now I'm not saying that we should spend like, like we don't want to turn into leather because we're always constantly in the sun, right? But like, you need that sun exposure. Like, I, you know, and people are like, oh, you're gonna wrinkle, you're gonna, you're a, you know, and I'm like, well, I'm almost 40, I don't have any wrinkles. I don't, I, you know, and I'm not saying that I won't develop them, but also, like, wrinkles have more to do with your collagen depletion. Uh, wrinkles have more to do with not being hydrated, you know, um, and all that stuff. Um, thank you, Pamela, for the sticker. Um, but, yeah, you know, and so I thought, eh. <laughs> I'm in the sun and I'm not going to die from it. And um, I also kind of feel like... Um, I watch people struggle, like, so they're self-conscious about their skin. Understandable, right? Because you have acne and you feel, you know, like you should hide that. And so you get, like, some gentle makeup and you cover your skin up, you know? And you're like, oh, I don't know what's wrong with my skin. I'm like, well, you know, we are, your skin breathes. Your, your skin literally breathes, right? Your skin literally takes in oxygen and all kinds of stuff. And when you slather various layers of makeup on... Um, you're literally suffocating your face. And then you go home and you have to use something to wipe it off. And then it's just like your face gets what? Maybe while you sleep you don't have makeup on, right? And I know that it's really hard. It's really hard because women in particular have been told that, like, should, I can think of multiple times, like, growing up as a teenager where, like, people are like, I remember this one lady, a girl, I should say, at school, this one teenage girl, she was, like, one of the popular kids, and I don't know, she started to hang out with me a little bit, I think it was just to make fun of me or something, you know, <laughs> like, in the movies or some shit, but she was like, wow, April, you would be so pretty if you just wore some makeup, and I remember... <laughs> And this is when we stopped hanging out. And I was like, and you'd be so much less of a bitch if you didn't say stuff like that. And she was like, oh. <laughs> and, you know, because if you think I'm outspoken now, you should have known me when I was a teenager. Um, but long story short, like, if you can slowly stop wearing makeup, you would probably help your skin health out tremendously. Plus, we know that makeup is just like jam-packed with like heavy metals and chemicals and all kinds of stuff like that um so somebody said i bought and used your wild elder rose serum made with avocado oh i can't the comments disappear um let's see top comment oh live chat oh there we go they're all back um they want to know if i'm going to make it with alcohol the so fast uh or make it with tallow um yeah i make the wild elder rose serum sometimes with tallow right now i'm working on my gels and a new cream formula for summertime shipping it is hard <laughs> it is hard to ship that type of stuff in the summertime obviously um but i'm pretty excited about this new cream cream formula. I've been um, working on it for about a year now and testing it. I have like this incubator thing that's meant for cosmetics that I can make it get like really hot and dip do different things like I, mean, I can even like this is completely unrelated, but, like, I um, can culture bacteria in there to make sure, like, I put it on a Petri dish to see if my cream has an accurate amount of preservatives or if bacteria grows. Every time I make a new formula, I have to do that to make sure that I'm like, okay, so I do or I don't have enough preservative in that to make it safe, right? Um, I don't know why on my old phone um, it takes away chats, but... Who knows? There are so many questions here. Um, somebody said use sunscreen to supplement with vitamin D. So that's not really the way that works. A lot of people don't realize that vitamin D is a hormone. <laughs> it's not a vitamin. And so I'm not saying that you can't use vitamin D, but you're, there's a lot more involved in the process. And just getting your serum levels up on your blood test doesn't mean that you're actually using that vitamin D, right? Like you need to actually be allowing the sun to hit your skin so you can do things like, oh, I don't know, 
tell your body to turn the cholesterol that you're ingesting into vitamin D versus just taking vitamin D and then you're like, oh, why do I have heart disease? Why do I have high cholesterol? Why do I have hardened arteries? Because your your body is not being told to turn the cholesterol into your body into the hormone that is vitamin D. So honestly, um, when it comes to vitamin D supplementation, if you're low, you're actually probably low in magnesium. And if you're low in magnesium, it's kind of their synergetic, right? You need calcium to use the magnesium and you need magnesium to create vitamin D and you need the sun to do that. Um, you cannot outsmart nature. You just can't. Um, but yeah, um, anyhow, <laughs> um, somebody said I may have missed it, but how do we supplement copper? I wouldn't supplement copper unless you get a test and it actually says that you are copper deficient. Oh, somebody said I was being sarcastic about the vitamin D thing. I don't know. I only see <laughs> you can't read tone, right? Can't read sarcasm sometimes over, um, over, um, you know, messages. Um, but I wouldn't supplement, um, but I'm sure there was somebody that was thinking that, um, I wouldn't supplement, um, copper unless you actually had a copper test done and you see that you're low in it. Now I would check your hair with an HTMA test and a blood serum test, right? Because, um, a blood serum test is kind of only like a snapshot in that moment when they took blood from you, right? It doesn't like look at it consecutively or congruently, I should say. But when you look at your hair, like remember, or think about how they do like drug tests on hair, same thing except for minerals. Like the hair that's been growing here is a long view over like the past like four months of like what my mineral status is, right? Um, and so getting an HTMA test for your copper levels um, or mineral levels in general are really fantastic. Um, but um, if I was going to just want to make sure that I'm getting enough copper without supplementing it because you can become copper toxic really easy. Um, I would be eating things like lots of seafood, especially shellfish, oysters. Oysters are great because they're really well balanced in um, zinc as well as copper. Uh, and now, of course, fresh pressed orange juice has a ton of copper in it. Uh, once it's pasteurized, it kind of denatures the copper, um, so it's not super great. Uh, but you could also do things like eat um, like um, unprocessed cocoa, right? Like it's not been alkalized. Alkalized strips a lot of the copper out of there. Uh, beef liver is a fantastic all all organ meats really liver heart now if you don't like the taste of liver you're probably cooking it wrong <laughs> uh flash cook it flash cook it like a steak a, a medium rare steak um overcooked liver tastes like minerals and it's pasty and disgusting you gotta flash cook it but if not you can get desiccated um liver pills um heart is the same way cook it like a medium rare steak versus like cooked all the way and it won't be all chewy and gross um uh, somebody said my nails are so long yeah that's because i'm eating all the things i talk about your body you know i also eat like um we have um, milk goats and we also have a milk cow but she's dry this year but um so i eat lots of calcium i eat lots of organ meats i have my own cattle i have you know um but even before then um i went out of my way to make sure that i was eating ample red meat and protein and gelatin and all these things that your, your body needs you to eat what your body is made out of, right? And of course, lots of well-cooked vegetables and stuff because we are omnivores, so. Um, but yeah, that's how I take care of my skin. Any questions? <laughs> and I know I could be here forever answering questions, but um, so yeah, somebody said any advice on fingernail strengthening, that's definitely it. Um, Let's see, just don't water your plants with salt water. Nobody wants to drink salt water, not really. Um, somebody said, I'm starting to wonder about oxalate overload from spinach and cocoa. Uh, I would be worried about spinach more than I would about chocolate. And if your kidneys are all right, you can handle oxalates. But like spinach is honestly a horrible food. It is so full and of oxalates and other really anti um, phytoestrogen type foods or nutrients, nutrients, anti nutrients. And you need to cook it really well and you need to eat it with a shit ton of like dairy because it strips calcium from your body to produce it. Like it's not the superfood that people think it is. Now I like spinach. I'll eat it now and then. I'm just like, I'm going to cook you all the way and I'm going to eat you alongside of some dairy, right? I'm going to make sure that I'm eating calcium with it. Um, HTMA is just, um, a hair test and like it analyzes your, your hair. Um, 
Somebody said they tried to kill weeds with salt water. Well, you salted the earth. <laughs> use vinegar next time. Just use distilled vinegar. But uh, focus more getting it on its roots. It fucks up the pH of the soil. And then uh, somebody said horsetail tea for hair and nails. You can um, be mindful that when people do that, it's because it has a lot of silica in it. And silica can be really rough on your kidneys and give you kidney stones. And if you're going to use horsetail, um, you need to actually internally, you're going to want to pick it when it's really young because it actually has less silica. Um, yeah, spinach will fuck you up. Um, so it says cocoa is major high in oxalates. Um, it's not as high as people think it is once it's been like, um, you gotta see if it's like free oxalates. Sorry, like is it bonded to something? Like, okay, so let's think about glutamate for an example. It's not similar, but it'll work the same way. So like, okay, so let's say that um, you're really sensitive to MSG. That is a real thing, even though the internet now tells us that's not possible. <laughs> it is a real thing. As a person who has horrible reactions to it, my father literally goes into anaphylactic shock from it. So uh, glutamate isn't just found in MSG. It's found in things like broccoli, tomatoes, um, uh, like uh, processed meats, right? It can have a lot of glutamate in it. Glutamate um, can cause things like anxiousness, anxiety, lowers your GABA levels. You need glutamate. You need it. But when it gets really high, it fucks you up. But a person who's glutamate sensitive, uh, the same way that they could be oxalate sensitive, needs to learn if something is a free glutamate or a free oxalate or if it's bonded to something, right? So tomatoes are fucking crazy high in glutamate. Like they're like one of the like up their foods, but I can eat it all day long because it's not a free glutamate, meaning the glutamate structure is bonded to something so it's not free to float around and go up to my brain and fuck me up now oxalates are the same way it depends if it has a free oxalate right because if it's bonded to something that it's not going to go settle in your kidneys it's going to be processed through your digestive tract so it's a little bit different um and then you have to look at like the protective actions and how you're using it now i would not fuck around with like um alkalized or dutch cocoa like, and cacao and cocoa are two different things and how they're processed. Um, once they alkalize it, they bust open those oxalates and it can fuck you up. But if you're eating, like, raw, unalkalized, right, like, it's bonded and it's super, super protective. Like, if you look at the studies of, like, how amazing chocolate in its, like, raw form is, like, the phenols in it, the anti-cancer, the kidney supportive, the, the, um, the respiratory, and not really so much respiratory, I should say, um, like, cardiovascular and all that stuff, um, your mental health, it's really a superfood. In fact, there was a lady, she lived to be, like, a hundred and 15 or something crazy like that um she they were like how do you live this long she ate 20 pounds of chocolate a month i think she lived in france i don't remember her name it was like it started with an e but you know you can google like old lady france chocolate <laughs> I ain't pop up um but anyhow um yeah so um i've drifted away from my skincare <laughs> And now I'm just doing a live chat. It looks like I've been on for about um, a half an hour. Um, so somebody said you need silica for the composition of collagen. I mean, kind of. You you silica isn't really um, a mineral that's necessarily required. It's like it doesn't harm you, but it's not like we need like ample amounts of silica because our body you can't like process silica in any way shape or form you can't digest it you can't um and take it into your bones you pee it out all day long um what are you still gonna show me um oh so somebody said uh oh somebody gave me a five dollar super chat um and they asked me if i recommend bovine or marine collagen i like bovine collagen um but honestly i like gelatin better so when you get into like just the collagen or like that you're missing all these awesome amino acids that are found in gelatin so i would start making my own jello out of like 
high quality grass fed beef gelatin. Um, but if I was going to just use collagen, I would probably go with the beef collagen more than the marine collagen. The marine collagen has been shown to have more heavy metals in it than the beef collagen, obviously, because it's in the ocean, right? Um, so let me tap on this. Um, just let me see the chat. <laughs> I lost it for a second. Oh, I don't remember how to use that phone. Thank you, Shorty, for the $50 super chat that made me go out of the... <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, so, all right, that, um, that was stressful, um, somebody said, I've seen that older people can't skip, why is that, I always, as a kid, last week, my 60th birthday, I tried, and I can't do it, because you stopped doing it, all right, um, I remember when I was, like, I don't know, I was, like, 34, 35, pretty young, pretty young, and I was at a gynecologist's office, and, and I remember why I like dropped something and I like squatted down to like pick it up and I just stood right back up and the lady's like, wow. And I was like, what? And she was like, most people past the age of 25 can't like just stand up from a dead squat. Right. And I'm like, shit, <laughs> why? She goes, well, because they don't do it anymore. Right. So if you never stopped skipping, you could probably skip the rest of your life. Right. But we stopped playing. We stopped doing that type of stuff. So you know, if you're not skipping anymore, then you probably can't skip anymore. But also, you know, you wonder about like your joint health, your mobility and all that kind of stuff. Um, oh, I don't know who said to take internal oregano oil pure, but please do not do that. Oh my God. There's like a whole, uh, there's a whole chapter in my book. I talked about, um, about digestive health. There's a whole fucking section of like people who destroy their life using oregano oil internally like please don't please don't um so um yeah but people were saying if it's uh if it's fungus versus eczema well if it's fungus you can try stuff topically right and like it's probably not invaded your body or you'd be much sicker, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, my essential oil, my new book um, called Essentially Deadly, The Unspoken Dangers of Essential Oils is available now as an ebook and an imprint book. Um, and you can find that by um, following the link in my bio or going to sheisofthewoods.org. Um, okay, so... Yeah, yeah, you get gelatin from Jello. Jello is made out of gelatin. Um, so I don't use sunscreen at all. I do have some really cool hats, and I have umbrellas, and I have shawls, long sleeve shirts, you know, shade from a tree. Um, okay, so you can buy uh, on Instagram. They're asking where to buy my book. You can when I'm done here, or if you go out and just to my profile on Instagram, you can click on the link and it'll take you to like options of my book. If you're on YouTube, I will drop a link in the description of this, or you can just go to sheisofthewoods.org. Um, all right. Um, uh, broken spider veins or capillaries. Um, a lot of that can be because like you don't have enough nutrition in your body, uh, but also your veins have begun to like get loose. So like this doesn't sound related, but like um, hemorrhoids are a symptom of like loose blood vessels. And so you can use things like a uh, nourishing herbal infusion of nettle to drink that, to really start helping tighten up your capillaries and stuff like that. But also um, look at your heart health. Um, if your blood isn't pumping well, if you don't have great vascular system, it kind of like, um, or if you have high blood pressure, it can start like, you start making these like weird side veins because your, your body can't really keep up with the pressure of the blood and so it makes all these like side little like think about like how when a river floods it makes all these little side creeks right because the water can't be maintained in the riverbed right and so you end up with all these extra little streams and creeks that go places because the water pressure is really high same thing for high blood pressure when you have high blood pressure your veins are like oh my god i can't handle this so it starts making these little offshoot veins and those can show up as like little capillary veins little veins you've never noticed before so it's something definitely um to look into so somebody says can you reverse wrinkles when you already have them 
it depends on how deep they are. But yeah, I've seen people who start working on like their nutritional profile, eating more healthy animal fats, um, working on being more hydrated. Um, you can do things to like tighten and tone your face, facial skin. Um, but you know, really it comes down to like, what are you doing internally to support your skin's capacity to be more elastic? But I've seen people reverse wrinkles by just working on their hydration and their mineral levels, right? Because when you're dehydrated and you don't have enough electrolytes in your body, your skin can sag. Thank you, Melissa, for the $20. Uh, what if you are a little allergic to nettle? Everybody's kind of allergic to it when it's fresh but see if you respond to it as an infusion, uh, like instead of like trying to use it fresh, but if you're still a little allergic to it, you could try to go with something like green tea more often, but not, don't get tricked into buying the green tea capsules. Like you need to actually be drinking the green tea because it has higher tannin levels in it. And those tannin levels are gonna help tighten things up. Uh, Somebody recommended, this isn't related at all, but it doesn't matter, I'm drifting off. <laughs> Someone recommended drinking a tea um, of saffron, cayenne, pepper, ginger, lemon, and garlic to help get rid of inflammation in my body. Can you please help explain which ingredient does? That is a, a kitchen sink method, and I wouldn't recommend that, honestly. A lot of those are inflammatory. Unless you are of, like, Hispanic descent, like, cayenne pepper is like the definition like your body's not adapted to that right like cayenne is very inflammatory to people who their ancestors didn't grow up eating those spicy foods right like that's why people that grew up around that can eat something really spicy and it doesn't phase them but my white ass can't go past like mild paste salsa <laughs> right because my ancestors didn't grow up using that but um if I was going to like work on like inflammation in my body, first find the thing that's causing the inflammation versus just looking at a Band-Aid. But also I would consider something like linden leaf, like linden bloom infusion, uh, maybe to pull down that. Um, tart cherry is fantastic for inflammation. Um, that There's a lot, and then ginger is a good anti-inflammatory, but that that's just a big kitchen. And saffron is straight up toxic, by the way, and crazy expensive. You can like kill yourself with saffron if you could afford to buy that much. Um, um, but, um, so is an American telling you to drink tea? Yes, I am. Yeah, that's, isn't that funny? Like, but I guess it's as funny as like watching somebody who's like in a various European, well, Western European country, like talking about coffee. <laughs> right. But also I'm not talking just about like black tea. Now let's just be honest. Green tea is different than black tea and it's not like highly drink right um but yeah there's all types of teas um let's see have i had any health professionals guide me in my journey to health no i've tried <laughs> and what happens is i'm like well that's not correct like what you're telling me and i figured it out on my own like i it's pretty much when so when i was pregnant with my daughter at the age of 21 um, i was told that i had stage three cervical cancer and that i had to get an abortion even though i was six months pregnant and that i needed to go through a full hysterectomy and chemotherapy or i would be like dead right and i was like all right i guess i'll just die i'll give birth to my daughter it wasn't like i was just a month or so along and then i'll make plans and then i was like actually fuck you and so by the time that I gave birth and they were able to do more, um, uh, you know, biopsies to see what had happened. It like reversed to um, stage three dysplasia, which is like just before it turns into cancer. And they were like, oh, I, this must have just been a fluke. I'm like, no, you guys did so many tests and told me I had cancer so often. It's almost like I was drinking like literally almost a gallon of turkey tail tea every day. And it's almost like I started radically changing my diet and like, and I also believe that giving birth to my daughter helped heal the area, right? Because the thing about cancer is your body doesn't see it as an invader. It is you, it is your cells mutated. So when I gave birth um, very quickly to a large baby, my body had to heal that area. And I really think that was a big part of it. But after being told that there was no way for me to live without like ripping my baby out of me and going through all of that, I was like, so that wasn't true. <laughs> and I was only 21 and so it impacted my neural pathways greatly and I was like fuck you I'll do it myself you know and it's kind of been like that for now that you know I'm 38 now um and so I just kind of 
I learn. I learn a lot. Um, thank you for the $20 papaya. She says, love you. Uh, going to, oh gosh, I don't know why the comments on here always go away. Uh, I'm going to get a dental extraction, a root infection, olive leaf extract instead of antibiotics. What are your thoughts about um, implants? Um, I wouldn't use essential oil, uh, if that's what you mean by extract, you could also mean tincture, um, but I like yarrow, I like, I would get like yarrow, I've had a lot of teeth pulled because I was homeless and then I was like below poverty line poor, so like my dental care consisted of like organ health plan would just pull teeth, they didn't fix anything, so um, on the back here, I'm missing all of my bottom teeth, except for they pulled out my back four molars, because I was like, yeah, they hurt, take them out, but I had actually, <laughs> I had actually seen um, an x-ray where I saw that my wisdom teeth were coming in straight, um, and so I was like, yeah, they hurt, and there's tiny cavities, and so they're like, okay, we'll pull them out, so they pulled out all four of my back whiz, or my back like molars and then within six months my wisdom teeth came in painlessly um, and so I got I have all my wisdom teeth in and I got four new teeth for free <laughs> um, but when they would pull these bottom ones my go-to was I would make yarrow tea with like dried yarrow blooms and then mix it with salt water and then use that as a wash, right? Um, but also, I'm not an herbalist that's afraid of antibiotics. Um, I like amoxicillin. Anything in the um, acillin, the penicillin family is fantastic. Um, it's been around for a long time. Um, it doesn't do too much damage um, to your gut health. And so if you're making sure to eat a lot of yogurt with it, you know, or fermented foods, or even taking a high quality soil-based probiotic. I don't like the lacto-based, like dairy-based probiotic even though I said yogurt um, but yeah um, but yeah it's I don't know I can do this all day long I <laughs> um, yeah chronic illness is not really handled by medical doctors very well um, I don't know if she's screaming at me to drink water but I'll take a drink of water um, somebody said they host a, a weekly podcast people ask me to go on their podcast all the time and I'm like can I use the word fuck <laughs> Because if I can't, if I can't, I will, um, I will, like, I will mess up your broadcast. Because <laughs> it will slip out of me. But, yeah, people can um, reach out to me through my website, through my customer service email. And my husband will set that up if, we're, if we do podcasts or not. But, um, yeah, um, a soil-based probiotic, what is that? Um, so, soil-based probiotic is like probiotics that are made out of soil, that are made out of the bacteria that occur in dirt. So um, our ancestors, no matter where you came from, they weren't eating lactose-based probiotics, even though if they ate lactose-fermented food, they got some of it. But when you eat a berry, like from the wild, like blackberries or a wild apple or something like that without washing it, you are getting soil-based probiotics. When you eat a carrot that you just dust off on your pants and you're eating that, you're getting soil-based probiotics. The, these were the primary bacteria that inhabited the human gut for ever and then when we got into being like hyper sterile and we got into hyper washing all of our food and being afraid of the big bad outside um it shifted into more dairy based um and that's not horrible but also like it's not as beneficial as the soil-based bacteria. And soil-based bacteria, soil-based probiotics have been shown to do more for your immune system, more for your gut health, more for just like increasing your lifespan, right? And you know, um, anyhow, so I think I've been on here for like, I have to say fuck. <laughs> yes, somebody's like, yes I do, I have to, well I don't have to, but like sometimes like that's just the way my neurodiverse brain flows and if I can't cuss it's, it's relatively hard. Um, yeah, people are always like, oh my god, I made a video about that a while back for my Instagram as well as my YouTube because um, people are like, I get that com that question like every day of the week during summertime tincture season, do I have to wash my plant, do I have to wash my plant, do I have to wash my plant, and it's okay, I don't judge people, we've just been conditioned into, into that. Um, so, anyhow, um, that's what I do for my skin, plus a bunch more of other random information that fell out of my head <laughs> because that happens. Um, okay, so I am going to jump off of here. I'm going to 
eat a little something because I feel hungry and then I'm gonna go about my day. So this will be uploaded, it'll be saved for later. If you are watching me on Instagram or if you're watching me on YouTube because I'm live on both right now, which turned out pretty good. Um, Make sure to like, comment, follow, subscribe, you know, turn on notifications, um, no matter which platform you're following. If you're following me on YouTube, come find me on Instagram. If you're following me on Instagram, come find me on YouTube. <laughs> I share all kinds of information like that. Um, and if you want to do all this stuff, remember you're smart enough to do that too. <laughs> I usually only say that when I'm like teaching something and I'm like, oh, you forgot to tell people they're smart enough, but you really are smart enough to do all the things I jabbered about and get your skills and health where you want it to be it can take a little bit of time it can take a little bit of change be patient with yourself but you really have the capacity to do this and if you want to support my existence and my capacity to teach freely and come on here and jabber for like an hour <laughs> about all the random things consider following the link in my bio um, if you're on Instagram or following the link in my description when this is posted to YouTube um, to call something home from my shop um, it's specifically how I support my existence. There is no other money coming in. Um, it is what I do for a living and that really goes a long way because I use the funds from my shop to be able to exist and teach freely. So thank you so much for watching folks. This worked out pretty well even though I'm probably like going back and forth with my eyes on the live um, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye. I did both hands because you're both here. <laughs> okay I'm gonna end that one and then I'm gonna end this one.